stage is so huge. Uh, I'm a bit overwhelmed. Please bear with me as the, this is the first time in my life I stand on the stage alone. I'm an elementary teacher. For the past 20 years, I've been living a teacher's life, like every other teacher in this planet. Children like us? No, 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 you can't do that. Good. Well done. Life became day in and day out without even making a ripple. I didn't dream. Life had been handed over to me and I just accept, accepted everything that was given. I probably would grow old inside school. This is what I would look like in 20 years time. One day, a casual conversation with a friend led to a transformation of my teacher's life. So today I want to share three things with you. Realize your right to dream and claim your right. Find the spark to your passion and become spark for others. Challenge your limits and help yourself realize your dreams. Some time ago, I attended the event. Mr. Gottrop Dong handed out awards and gave a speech. As I stood there watching, I wanted so much to be the person receiving the award. And I also wanted to be the person stand there giving a speech. Then immediately, an inner voice said to me, Shuna, are you crazy? You don't even talk in small groups. How could a person like you give a speech? <laughs> Remember the group photo you took last week? You were hiding behind people again. <laughs> then there's another voice said, Shuna, you have the right to dream. It took me 20 years to realize this. I have always struggled speaking in front of a crowd, especially English. By nature, I'm very shy and quiet. So I always try to play it safe, talk nice, and smile, and agree with everyone. <laughs> Sometimes people just forget about me. But even if they did remember me, they remember me as the quiet person. So it is really a huge challenge for me to speak in front of a large crowd. Giving a speech is my first victory. Today I would like to tell you, don't wait for 20 years to realize you have the right to dream. You are allowed to dream right now, right here, right at this moment. However, dreams will remain only as dreams if you do not start from something. What is that something? That something is something you do the best, something you want to do, and something you are interested to do again and again. That something is your passion. Once you find your passion, you find a path leading to your dreams. It took me quite some time to realize this. Actually, the moment I realized this passion thing was from a conversation. I, one day, I had a conversation with uh, Michael Ang, one of my volunteer colleagues in community at work. So one day I said, Michael, I can't do to resign from school and apply for a job in the United Nations. You may be wondering why I want to work for the United Nations. Uh, just some background information. I was born in a small village in China and I grew up in a family of five. So this is my family. Could you recognize me? Uh, I'm the youngest. I did look like four. <laughs> So, grew up in an environment like that, I understand what life was like, Stay, uh, living in life where everybody is poor. So, now I have been living a good life in Singapore, but I want there are many, many, many millions of children out there living a life similar to my childhood. So, I want to give back and help more children in a larger scale. That was why I wanted to work for the United Nations. Now let's come back to the conversation. That conversation was so important that it changed my life at the spot. So Michael said, oh, the United Nations, my wife has a friend working there. Send me your CV. There you go. You need a friend, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I sent him my CV and also applied for a few positions in the United Nations. Later Michael came back to me and said, wait a second, 
you have been doing a great job at school as a teacher. Why would you want to leave? That told him that I wanted to do more than just teaching. Then he replied. His reply changed my life at the spot. He said, you can still do more while teaching. What is your passion? Sometimes in life, what we need is only a spark. Michael's four words served as that spark, which ignited a big fire within me. Do you have passions? What are your passions? For me, other than teaching the little ones, my passion is to write. I always enjoy writing and always wanted to write after retire. Then immediately, the inner voice came out again. You want to write? You have not published anything in your life. And writing in what language? English? That's your second language. Chinese? You have forgotten half of your Chinese. Your Chinese is only good at ordering food in hawker centers. <laughs> <laughs> then there's another way to say, Shuna, you have the right to dream. So we have to decide which voice to follow. Oh, by the way, do you also have voices talking inside your head? <laughs> I have them all the time, and sometimes they argue too. <laughs> so I followed the second voice and started to write. I may not know how to write beautifully in English. I may have forgotten half of my Chinese, but I know children. I have been telling children's stories for the past 20 years, and I'm a Chinese teacher. I could write Chinese stories to help my children learn Chinese. Over the next two months, I wrote 200 stories. The moment I put my hands on the keyboard, the stories just flowed out like melody. It was a beautiful experience. So this is uh, my two boys. <laughs> uh, this is a... Uh, this is a uh, oh, this is Baba and this is Gogo. Baba and Gogo represent children attending international schools. They go to school and build moral values. They have birthday parties and play with friends, and they go for holidays with them. My students love going on adventures with Baba and Gogo, meeting new people and visiting foreign countries. You people are all smart, and you have your own passion. Think about your passion. What makes you happy? What did you enjoy doing when you were young? What do you do when you have no fears or worries? Once you found that something, you found your passion. Once I followed my passion and wrote the stories, changes started to take place. My life became more exciting and purposeful. I felt like I had a purpose for the per first time in my life. My class became more interesting and the children are more engaged in learning Chinese. And my colleagues are also inspired and motivated to find their own passions. So, I pass that spark to other people in our community. It feels good. So find your spark, become a spark, and pass it on to others. There's a candle inside everybody's heart. Use your spark, light up all the candles, one by one. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could start a dream and also inspire the people around you to dream together with you? Once you find your passions, you will have to overcome all your limits and fears and worries to help yourself throughout the whole process. Have you ever stepped out of your comfort zone? Have you experienced the pains and struggles when you do something new? We all have limitations. Um, that's just the nature of life. Nothing is wrong in that. But when you pursue your passions, 
when you pursue your dreams, you will just have to step away from all the comfort and security. When you go beyond your boundaries, your family and friends may warn you and stop you. The other people may look at you and laugh at you. And you yourself may feel very uncomfortable, uncertain, and scared. That was what I experienced when I worked on my dreams. My dream for these 200 stories is to develop them into interactive apps. But I didn't know where I could find the money to develop apps. Children's stories need illustrations. For 200 stories, I will need 1,006 to 2,000 pictures. I didn't know where I could find the money to fund this illustration. So there were times that I felt like a fish being stranded in the sand. There were times I almost succeeded in talking myself out from pursuing all these dreams. I didn't have to do that. But in the end, I decided I just have to overcome all these fears and worries. I have to challenge my limits. I have to dream at least once in my life. But you know what? Oh, this is the story. Once that decision was made, unexpected things started to happen. At that time, when I was writing the stories, my cousin was in Singapore. So one day, I shared with him that I would donate all the proceeds of the stories to charity. But he was so inspired that he wanted to be part of it and he sponsored the illustrations. I was just like blown away. I could not thank him enough. Along the way, as I shared my dreams, one by one, people just came to me, ran alongside me, and gave me all the support I needed, for which I'm really happy and grateful. So don't be shy to share your dreams. One person's effort it's not enough to make all your dreams come true. Once you decide to pursue your dreams, be persistent, never give up. Although my stories help the children inside our community, I still want to help more underprivileged children outside of our community. As I shared my dreams, my family and friends joined me so we started a nonprofit organization. We took underprivileged children to the Perth Park. We got U.S. ambassador to come and inspire them. We went to India, Cambodia, Vietnam, visited village schools and children's homes. We developed plans and programs to help them. If I didn't challenge my limits, if I didn't overcome all my fears and worries, if I didn't make a decision to dream at least once in my life, none of this would have happened. I'm an elementary teacher. I teach six classes a day. Sometimes when I get tired, I just want to close my eyes and forget about everything. It was the dreams that gave me go. The dreams are yours. If you do not work on your dreams, who will? If you do not help yourself to realize your dreams, who will? If you do not motivate yourself to keep going, who will? I'm an elementary teacher. I'm 45 years old. If a middle-aged elementary teacher dare to dream and pursue those dreams, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Don't just dream, dream big. May all your dreams come true. Thank you.